How you guys doing today? I'm Dwayne, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about the five typical, most common uh, weld joints out there. Go through and explain how I weld them and the different patterns that I use. The joints that we're gonna go through today are gonna be the butt joint, lap joint, edge joint, fillet joint, and corner joint. Here is our butt joint. Very easy to tell that it's a butt joint because it's literally two pieces butted up next to each other and you're just welding the seam right in between. Uh, these are used in a lot of different areas within welding. Um, everything from automotive to diff covers like we weld. Um, there's a lot of applications for it. This is probably one of the more common joints that you'll actually see as you start going through your welding career. I'll stick my gun pretty much at a 90 degree angle, tilted just slightly back towards my, my actual puddle. And as I'm dragging it back this way, I'm just going side to side, back and forth, very slowly. There's a lot of different techniques to this, but that's the one that I use most of the time for the butt joint. Things to watch out for when you're doing this is making sure that you're moving side to side, making sure your wire isn't actually hitting that, that joint and that little gap in there, and making sure that your settings and everything are right. Otherwise, you're gonna fall, have your wire fall through that joint and either lose contact altogether. If you're welding it on a table like this, you'll just make contact with the table. So make sure that your speed back and forth is nice, consistent, and just watch that puddle. You can watch that puddle connect both sides as you're dragging it back, going back and forth. Next one is going to be our lap joint. As you can see, a lap joint is when one piece of material is underneath and the other piece actually overlaps the uh, bottom piece. We're using quarter inch material here, so I'll start on the bottom plate and actually wrap my bead up and around, kind of doing more of like a cursive E is basically what I'm doing. You want to focus on actually diving in to the corner and getting good penetration each time you go around. And that's one reason that I actually like more of the cursive E style is as I'm coming uh, forward, I'm actually watching my wire dive into that corner and I'm watching that penetrate into that corner. And then I'm wrapping it back up and around, eating around this top, coming back down, back into that, that corner, up and around. Again, there's a lot of different techniques for this, depending on application, things like that. But for what we do here, this is pretty much the standard for what we do. All right, so next we have our edge joint. So all the edge joint is is just two pieces of material sandwiched together and you're literally just welding the edge of it. So things to watch out for on this when you're doing this is always make sure that you position this where you can see both sides. Because as you can see right there, I actually missed that side of it. So making sure that you can see both sides and using a pattern to where you're either gonna just go straight back and forth Something like this, you're gonna wanna do more of like a cursive E style because you wanna bring that puddle actually out to the edge, into the edge, out, in, out, in. And that way you're making sure you're hitting both sides. Now, we're gonna go with the fillet joint or also called a T joint. All it is is you have a base plate and then you have your other plate at a 90 degree angle coming up from it. This one, same thing with kind of the actual lap joint. My pattern is basically the same. I'm just starting on my base material, 
wrapping into that seam, coming up, back down, up, down. And again, the big thing is making sure as you're coming into that seam, making sure you can see that wire penetrating nicely into that corner because if you're not watching that wire and watching it penetrate in and making sure that it's going into that corner, what will happen is you'll actually get a nice little air bubble behind your weld and you won't get the penetration necessary to have a decent weld and this will end up breaking. So again, there's a lot of different techniques for that. There is things like doing a triangle is kind of the same thing, but you're basically starting at the base, going straight in, coming up, going down to the base, going straight in, coming up. And it looks literally like a little triangle as you're doing it. And it's the same concept. You're just making sure that you're diving into that base material, diving into your actual seam, and then back up to the base material up top and just making that nice pattern. Next one we got is our corner joint. So as you can see, it's just two pieces of material butted up in, at a 90 degree angle into a corner. Um, a lot of times you'll see these on like bumpers, different like vehicles have a lot of corner joints, things like that. Um, it's a very common joint in a lot of structural welding. We actually make a lot of products that have the corner joint in it. And best thing for this is if you can, if it's small enough, I like to have it resting up kind of like that to where I can see both sides and they're nice and level to each other because that allows me the easiest way to kind of be able to see both sides and be able to fill it evenly. Because if it's actually setting like this, it's a little bit tricky to actually get it nice and even and flat because your weld is gonna try it and fall down. Because well, the weld puddle is kind of like water. It wants to fall down, it wants to follow gravity. So it, it's definitely a lot trickier. There's a lot of tips and techniques on how to bring your weld back up and keep it up nice and tight. But smaller pieces, like I said, if you can, best thing you can do is lay it down. And so for these, you can either go straight forward and back on it, or if it's a kind of a thicker gap, you can do, like I said, the cursive E style. Um, you can do what would be a upside down Christmas tree is what we call it in, in the industry. But it's basically you start way down in the center, bringing your weld straight up to the corner, across the corner, diving back down. But there's a lot of techniques. This one, I use more of a cursive E style. So again, I'm starting down in my seam, bringing my weld up, bringing it over to the backside, and just following that all the way down. All right, guys, so now that we've gone through the five most typical welds and joints that we have, these are pretty much the basic welds and joints that you're gonna see. Um, I know in my line of work and the places that I've worked throughout my career, it was always either corner joint, fillet joint, or a butt joint. It, it's rare that you really see lap joints and edge joints anymore, but that doesn't mean that you're not gonna run into that at some point in your career. Um, I always tell people, these five, practice. Uh, whether you use it or not, again, there is a possibility of that joint being somewhere in your career. So set them up the way that we show here and just practice. Find material, practice them. Um, and it, welding's one of those things too where it's really cool because even if you don't use these two, just the practice of the pattern in the different way it's set up definitely helps in all the other ones. 
So just play around with it. Again, practice as much as you humanly can and find as much material as you can to do that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a lot. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below, let us know and we'll get back to you. I'm Dwayne, hope you enjoyed the video.